I'm Rick Foster. Welcome back to Rick Uncork 365. I hope you're getting something out of this YouTube channel and learning a little bit about wines as we explore the wines throughout California, Italy, France, Germany, South America, Australia, South Africa, and various locations. Now, soon we'll start traveling and doing some on-site locations and some wine tastings in Paso Robles, Temecula, and some various other regions. And I'll take you along with me when I go on vacation um, to Europe. But today, I wanna to talk a little bit about, we've talked some about the wine industry, but I wanna give you a little bit more information about this winery. This is Avalon Wines. Now, Avalon Wines was created by Derek Benham. And Derek Benham graduated from UC Davis in 1982 with a degree in literature and philosophy. You would think that that would lead you into winemaking, but it did. Derek's family tended to pistachio uh, farming in the San Joaquin Valley. So he grew up on, on farming and pistachios, which isn't too far from the wine region. When he wasn't able to secure a job after graduating with the decline of the economy back in the late 80s, he then, or in the mid 80s, I guess it was, he took a job for a floundering winery doing sales. And in that, he learned about marketing of wine, he learned how to promote different wines, and he was able to turn that winery around and make it into a viable um, company, which then later sold to La Crema Winery. Well, that gave him the idea that he could actually start going into wineries, remarketing and rebranding their uh, wines, and actually turn companies around that were having trouble in the wine market. With that, he then founded his own company called Purple Wine and Spirits. And now today, Purple Wine and Spirits has created several different brands of wines. Now, Derek is an entrepreneur as well as a winemaker. So he has taken um, wine companies that he's developed or that he's purchased. He's rebranded them, he's promoted them, he's marketed them. And the first thing that he says the marketing, of course, is the label. So on this one here, he has revamped this label for Avalon and it is now seen throughout the market. So he's able to capture that um, distribution as well as the eye-catching, you know, beautifully designed label. With that said, this winery that he has created is in Lodi, and this is a um, region that's known for the old vine Zinfandels. It's also a region that became very warm during the day and then cold at night, a very much um, like the Mediterranean climate. So the wines tend to taste a little bolder like you would expect from the Mediterranean regions of Europe. Now this is a Cabernet Sauvignon 2017. Now this wine of 2017, they were able to obtain enough water to really get those grapes, you know, uh, matured and ripe and then they wait for a late harvest because the, the rainfall was very light at the beginning of the year. It took longer for those grapes to really, you know, mature. So it wasn't until October that the warm, you know, the, the, the warm air, the Santa Ana winds that create the warm weather started to really heat up and allow those grapes to really start to ripen. So the fruit that was picked is actually a very bright, color it's fruit forward and this wine is aged for up to 12 months in oak barrels so i'm expecting to have a nice oak and vanilla uh, tone to it the oak barrels that is used in avalon is a cross between the french and american oak with 15 percent of it being new oak so that way we get some of that flavoring from that oak, as well as a lot of the um, smoothing out of the tannins and the acidic from the older oak um, in those barrels. Well, I'm gonna give this a try and I'll let you know what I think. And it is a twist off cap, it's not a cork, which I, I'm not particularly fond of, but I'm not gonna be keeping this for a long time, so it doesn't really matter as far as being in the cellar. It has a rich plum um, smell to it, aroma. It's a little 
lighter um, in color when I hold it up to the glass um, than I was actually expecting. So what I'm tasting is a lot of fruit. I've got that, that um, like a, a really ripe raspberry, um, some ripened plum. Um, I've got tannins and I've got a low acidic level. So the acidic level is about, it's, it's very dry. And that's from the tannins, a little bit of the oak. I'm not really tasting a heavy oak um, taste but that may have just 15% new oak, and if he's using 85% of used oak, that may be very older, you know, used uh, barrel, so I'm not getting a lot of an oak um, taste. However, that oak still has served a purpose in toning down some of the tannins, bringing some of that acid down, but there's still a lot of acidic in that. Now, it does have a back end of a hint of mocha, let me give this another taste. So, in the process of making this wine, I think you may have heard me talk about the, um, where when they pick the grapes, sometimes they'll submerge them in ice cold water. They'll submerge those grapes in ice cold water. The grapes will then start the fermentation process in that cold water. I believe this is how this was processed. I'm getting a lot of that, um, that taste of watered down um, essence within the, within the grape. So the water starts to separate slightly from the, from the juices. And I can taste where the water is separating and trying to blend itself with the juice, but it's still, it's got that taste of a watered down juice, which tells me that's how they fermented it. So they fermented it in cold water. They put it into a cold water bath before they started the, the fermentation process. And that it's um, probably done this way to one, save on costs. Also, the way that it's been stored in the oak barrels, I'm not confident of how that was how that was done. I don't think it was done in the traditional oak barreling because I'm not getting that oak barrel age fermentation taste that I would expect from a Cabernet Sauvignon, which has been oak barrel age for 12 months. But with that said, for the price range, and this was under $15 a bottle, I think I paid $12 for it, maybe $13. I would say that it's a nice red table wine. It's a very light Cabernet Sauvignon. It's a little high on the on the alcohol uh, taste to it, and a little low on the sugar, a little low on the um, on the fruit forward that I was expecting from this. However, it's not bad for an everyday table wine. It's got a lovely label. Um, it has a nice story, and it's from a California entrepreneur in Lodi, California. So that has opened up a little bit, and it's given me a little bit more of a of a berry um, tone to that with that mocha. So I am starting to taste more of the berry with the mocha in the back end. So I think maybe another let this bottle you know air open for 15 minutes. And I think it it'll start to give off some more of that um, fruit forward that I was originally expecting from my first taste. Well, anyways, I hope you enjoyed this segment, and I look forward to seeing you in our upcoming segments. Thank you. Cheers.